Welcome to the new season of the Simply Jesus podcast. So I want to introduce my first guest, which is Marley McFarlane. Welcome. She's a local youth pastor. Um, As we focus on fixing our eyes on Jesus for uh, kind of this season, what would you say, Marley, um, what does that look like? I mean, what are some practical ways to really fix our eyes on Jesus? Yeah, well, first, first thing that comes to mind, and this is not just because you're sitting here, but I think having people in your life who point you to him like consistently is key. And I think you have done that for me. And so I just want to honor you in that. Like, I think you having me here is an honor, but to think that someone who's poured so much into me and taught me so much values what I have to say, it's really meaningful. But I do think when you're learning what it means to fix your eyes on Jesus, having somebody one person or more people in your life who point you to him, like when you bring them something, you're like, I'm really struggling with this. Having somebody that's like, let's pray about it. Let's read the word changes everything because we all have people in our life who you vent to and then they like pile it on and that doesn't really help. And so I think having somebody in your life who points you to the Lord is like a really good practical step to take. Right. Um, But also I think when we hear the language fixing our eyes on Jesus, we want to have all of these really big things that we do. Like I read four hours of the Bible every right. morning and I spend six hours in prayer. And if you do that, that's really great. <laughs> um, but I think it's a lot simpler than that. I think it's waking up in the morning and just saying, okay, Lord, like the day is yours. And then throughout your day, if you're having a really good day, thanking him for that. Or if you're really stressed out, just saying, okay, God, like, again, this day is yours. And I'm going to focus on that. And I think it's not easy. Right. Um, some days it is, <laughs> but some days it's really difficult. But if we can just make like one little simple step to say, okay, God, like I believe that this day is yours. And so I'm going to give it to you. I think he will meet you in everything that you're going through. That's so good. Cause it, it reminds me to focus again, back on the relationship that you, we do want to be in the word and be in community, but ultimately it's that mindset of when something happens, I think, especially when just things that are disappointing happen, then we set our eyes back on Jesus and say, Jesus, what do you think about this situation? What's really going on? And I think he can just give us so much clarity because we can get caught up in our emotions. People are going to hurt us. Um, You know, we're going to be, we're going to disappoint people and people will disappoint us. But if we can go back to the Lord and say, okay, what's really going on? And he can just say, you know, help us understand. And I think that probably moves easily into, um, having our identity in Jesus. You know, what is, what does that really look like? Um, and it is, it's asking him when things go wrong to be able to say, um, you know, I thought I was going to get invited to that party and I didn't, right. We're feeling insecure and we get to look at Jesus and say, you know, um, I don't know, just ask him the questions about that and let him say, sure, that doesn't define who you are. Yeah. You're not different because you didn't get invited. It doesn't mm-hmm. make you, you know, less who you are, doesn't less lovable or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I also think like in those situations, you know, obviously there's like hurt there when we're not invited somewhere. That's obvious. But in the times in our life where it's not obvious why we're feeling something, he wants to uh, tell you yes. and he does. And so many times I've been frustrated about something and then I'm like why am I frustrated and if I don't pray about it then I'm still confused and if I just stop and I say okay God like why did that hurt me so bad honestly like things come up and maybe it's recent or from the past but he's like revealing to me wounds or things that I believe about myself that are not true and are making the situation worse and so I think it's like recentering to say okay God like what is going on right why why do I feel like this what has been said about me or what is my internal dialogue saying about me that's causing me to walk in frustration and he he wants to show you like he wants to reveal to you the areas in your life that that are our lies or things that you're believing about yourself that aren't true that are making our whole perspective on everything look right yeah so what would you say um especially working with teens what are the things that are we're allowing to reflect back to us who we are that's not really who we are that are that are kind of lies and it could be even good things but what do you see mostly people are looking to to find you know who am I am I seen am I important yeah I think that there are like two really big things that come to mind like categories of things and I think we are all people that are gifted right we have things that we're really good at and I think that's one big way that we allow 
those things to reflect our identity. So for example, okay. like maybe you are the best soccer player on your team. Well, then you're believing like who I am as a soccer player. So if I get hurt, right, everything derails because your identity is in that you're a soccer player. Or for me, like a youth pastor, right? Like if I am thinking that my identity is youth pastor, well, then any time that I'm not being a youth pastor, I'm like lost. I don't know what right. to do because I'm forgetting that right. that's actually not who I am. Right. And so I think like we're all good at things and we all have things that we love to do and we're allowing that to reflect in our life. So whatever it is for you, maybe it's being a mom or being a dad or maybe it's um, your job. You're really good at your job. Like we let that reflect us. And then I think the second really big category is people in our life. Mm, I think that we so often without even realizing, allow what people around us um, say to affect us. And I hope if you're listening, you have people in your life that tell you good things uh, about yourself and speak life into you. But I also know for a lot of people, that's not the case. Right. And I think um, all of us, if we look back, like growing up, there were things said about us that were probably really hurtful. I mean, I remember like specific things that were said to me as a first grader and I've allowed that to, to stick with me, you know? And I think Um, the people around you really matter. I'm not saying like get rid of everybody, but I think that is one really big factor into our identity is things that other people have said about us directly to us or about us that sticks on you. And it makes you think like, what am I saying about other people and how is that impacting the way that they see themselves? Yeah. It's almost like we need to take a step back and, and look at our circle and say, why do I always feel bad when I leave this situation? Maybe yeah. it's a group of people, or maybe it's a one-on-one. But if you're leaving um, a party or a lunch or a dinner, mm-hmm. and you're not, you're feeling worse about yourself. Mm-hmm. That's probably a good indicator to step back and say, maybe I've given them too much power yeah. over who I am. And I, and I think that happens a lot in relationships. You know, even good relationships can go bad. Yeah. Um, but if you start feeling so negative about yourself that you don't measure up or they're always disappointed Mm -hmm. in you that's probably you know one of those red flags to step back and it doesn't make these other people necessarily bad but sometimes we are allowing them to have too much say in our life allowing them to define who we are Mm -hmm. as opposed to just really knowing and I I think that's probably is the hardest thing Mm -hmm. is um, after that how do we really, really know who we are in Jesus? Do yeah. you have any? Yeah. Well, I'm also just thinking like something you said just made me like brought this Go ahead. to mind. Yes. So I don't know if it's for anything, but I think like the words that people say about us really impact us. But I also think it's opening the door to either let the Lord um, speak into it or let the enemy speak into it. And I think honestly, the times in my life where I have lost sight of who I am as a child of God, it's because I've allowed what the world says or what I say to be an open door to the enemy to just get in there and just like, you know, like really get in there and convince me that that is who I am, that I can't measure up. I can't do anything right. And like, that is the opposite of what the Lord says. And so if we can shut the door spiritually to what the enemy wants to do and just say, okay, God, like I believe what you say about me is true and find that and seek that, like he will speak louder than what the enemy does. Mm, And I think that just came to mind this like, yes, like physical people in our life say things about us. We say things about us um, that are not helpful and about our identity, but I think it opens the door for the enemy to move in really big ways, um, which then just stirs the pot more. And like, if we don't shut the door to that, if we don't recognize what's going on there, um, then it's really hard for the Lord to move. Not that he can't, but we're allowing our thoughts and everything to hold space where he wants to. Yeah, that's so, good. That I, to it reminds me of a time I had put on a bunch of weight and mm-hmm. I, I remember, you know, wanting like leaving the house mm-hmm. and feeling so insecure and I'm probably meeting with people that already love me, <laughs> but I was just feeling insecure. And finally the Lord's like, Cheryl, are, are you like a different person mm-hmm. just because you've gained some weight? I'm like, well, no, like, okay, then why are you allowing that to make you feel so insecure? Mm -hmm. Like you are still the same person inside. And, and really, you know, if I go into that situation feeling insecure, the people around me are going to reflect that they're going to be like, what's going on with you. Right. But if I can just say, okay, things happen and we all change, (laughs) right. Our identity can't be in our appearance. Um, and if you can just walk into that and say, I'm still the same Cheryl, you know, whether whoever that is, um, that doesn't change things. I think that makes, but it's a mental, it is like you said, it's a mental, um, game or, you know, 
intentionality that you have to say, okay, it doesn't matter. I, and even if you have to say those things over yourself before you step out, um, into that situation and just remind yourself who you are. Yeah. That makes me think my mom growing up, like anytime we would leave to go do anything, she would always say, don't forget who you are. And I would always be like, I'm Marley. Like, I'm not going to forget who I am, but I kept like thinking like she's saying like, don't forget whose you are. Oh, like you are yes. the Lord's. And so when you walk out of the house, like, don't forget, like you belong to him and that's what matters. And I think I did not live like that. I mean, I was just consumed with myself and what people thought about me. And looking back, if I would have approached each day realizing like I am the Lord's, that would have changed a lot. Like right. you're saying, like, if you realize like, it's not about like, I'm the same person regardless of what I look like or the friends that I have, um, I'm the Lord's and that changes a lot to have that. And so like, that's a good reminder. Like, don't forget who you are and don't forget whose you are. Right. And if we walked out our life like that, I think things would change with yeah. our identity. And I think too, you know, let's say you didn't make the soccer team mm-hmm. and now you go to school and you're thinking, oh, they all know, you know? And when in reality, if you can still hold your head, your head up high and just go, I am who I am. Yeah. This didn't work out, but these things don't define me. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, there's so many good things that will happen mm-hmm that we don't want to define us. And then there's going to be other, you know, bad things. And we have to stay focused on, um, you know, really who the Lord says we are and Mm -hmm. whose we are, that he loves us so dearly. Yeah, that's good. Do you have any last words for our listeners of either practical steps they can do uh, just to kind of make sure that they they truly know who they are as they try to walk out and not let other people Mm -hmm. define them? Yeah, I think I do an activity a lot with the youth. Um, and I've done it like multiple times, like with myself too. And like in college. And I think like our name is important. Like that defines you like your name. And so if we think of the word said about us as a name, um, so like wherever you are, wherever you're listening, I think it's important to like right now, if you have space or later, write down like the names that you have given yourself or that other people have given you. So for me, like silly things, like when I was in middle school, somebody called me dead puppy because of Marley and me, you know, like just things like that, which that doesn't hold that much weight, but like thinking of all the names that people have said, and maybe it's athlete or maybe it's, um, you're not good enough, whatever those names are, think about them and write them down. And once you write them down, then holding space to ask the Lord, like, what do you think? about me and the times that I have done that and other people have done that like he gives direct response to that wow when you feel like I'm unlovable he's like no you're lovable and when you think all I am is an athlete he's like no you're like so much more than that you're chosen and you're worthy and you're loved and you're forgiven and I think if we can hold space to do that like that is an activity I would want everybody to do every listener to do because there are a lot of things that you may not even realize that you're placing your identity in and the Lord wants to say like those things are not true. I call you something different. Um, even your name, like that doesn't even matter. Like he goes above and beyond that. And I think he wants to reveal that to us and he will. Um, and so that would be something I think everybody should do, whether you're listening right now and you have time to do that or tonight or tomorrow morning, like whatever it looks like, I think giving space to ask the Lord, what do you believe about yourself? That's not true. And then asking him, what does he think about you? Because I guarantee it's different. Yeah. yeah. I almost can see myself like putting all these names down on a paper. And as I talk to the Lord, I kind of mark them off. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you're unlovable. And you mark that off. You're like, nope, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, just listing all of those things down. And then, um, it's just, it's like the truth over them, you know, and then you look down at your sheet and see what's left of, of who God said you are. Yes. But it's, there's something I think, of, like you said about writing it and making a conscious decision to close the door to any kind of power that it has mm-hmm. over you. Um, it's just going to bring you so much freedom. Yes. Yeah. So much. Like I'm even thinking like a big thing for a lot of people is fear, right? We're so fearful, but I think if you ask the Lord, he would say like, no, you're brave because he's in you. And how, fulfilling is that and free to walk out knowing, no, I'm brave because the Lord makes me brave. I didn't have to be on my own. And this fear that's so big is real, but he's like, no, you're brave because I'm with you. And I think he wants to like completely right all of the wrong wow. things that we think about ourselves. Um, and there's a lot in there. Right. I mean, that don't even come immediately to mind, but if you just wait and write them down, I think he will give direct response to those things. Um, And I think that's what's so beautiful about Jesus wanting to come alongside of you. And I think sometimes we just think about Jesus, 
you know, horizontally and he's here, but he really is so close to us. And he wants to say, let me be your courage as you fight through this fear. Let me be whatever it is, your confidence as you go to this scary situation that you're feeling a little insecure about. And I think, I don't know that we realize we can just take him with us and yeah. we can actually take what we don't have. You know, mm-hmm. if, if we are feeling insecure, we can take his courage and we can take what he has um, I think in that strength, mm-hmm. I, I just think it's such an amazing tool that the Lord has given us, right? Jesus yes. has walked on this mm-hmm. earth, and so he knows how we feel. He knows what it's like to be insecure, yeah. for people to betray him, for people to say negative things, and to think that he's coming with us, mm-hmm. is it's so beautiful. It is, and it's like, I want to be defined by what he says about me and what he's saying when he's with me. I want to be defined about what the world says about me. I want to be defined by who he says. And so if I believe that he's with me and in me, then his confidence like can be mine and his strength can be mine and his love can be mine. And I want that. Yes. I want to walk in that. And so I just think for anybody listening, if you're feeling not great or not knowing where your identity is, like the Lord wants to show you what it is yes. and he's with you. Like where the yes. spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and you can have that yeah. today. He can be in you today and right all of those wrongs. Um, and maybe there's years of that, but he wants to change that. Um, right. And he wants to give you his confidence. And for you to know that it's not about the things that you can do or the things that you do right or wrong. It's about what he's doing. Wow. And that's perfect. Yes. And like, who wouldn't want that? Right. Yeah. That's a great place to start. Um, thank you, Marley. That was really good.